Coming up on Mountain News at 6, a man who was involved in a deadly DUI crash back in 2014 is facing new drug charges. And new legislation in Frankfurt would require those wanting to substitute teach to have a certificate. Plus, we are dry through midweek, but rain chances are not far away. Your forecast coming up as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. The man who pleaded guilty to four counts of second degree manslaughter in connection to a 2014 DUI crash that killed four people in Breathitt County is now facing more drug related charges. Police charged Sean Harden with drug trafficking and several others following a drug bust in Hazard. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox talked to Harden in jail today. Hazard police conducted a traffic stop on Village Lane where they say they found one pound of meth in Sean Harden's car. Police said they then arrested him, but what led to the arrest? Harden says the answer is addiction. I'm an addict. I love drugs. <laughs> Harden says he was in rehab, but says he left the program. When asked if he had a message for people about addiction, he said, Everybody ain't started them, don't start them, because it's addiction, it's hard to beat. Harden pled guilty in 2014 to second degree manslaughter after four people died during a crash in Breathitt County. Harden was reportedly driving under the influence when the crash happened. Now, nearly a decade after that crash, Harden says, oh. Last was last, and I'm sorry about that. When police arrested him on February 5th, his status as a convicted felon led police to reportedly charge him with possessing a handgun. Harden is being held at the Kentucky River Regional Jail and Hazard Channel Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Police also said they found a meth pipe and 206 empty baggies in Sean Harden's car. Jail administrators say Harden was in court this morning. We have an update on a story we first told you about last night at 11. Kentucky State Police have released the identity of a person killed in a motorcycle crash in Knott County. 65-year-old Steve Howard of Hazard was riding the motorcycle on Kentucky 160 in the Lick Car community when police say a car crossed the center line and hit the motorcycle head on. Howard was taken to a hospital where he died from his injuries. In Lawrence County, one person is dead after a crash involving a semi truck and a car. Troopers say this crash happened this morning on US 23 near the junction of Kentucky 645. The semi was heading south when it struck a car head on coming from the other direction. Police say the person behind the wheel of the car was killed. The identity of that person has not been released. One person is dead after a fire at an apartment complex in McCreary County. That fire happened yesterday afternoon on Highway 1651 in the Stearns community. The coroner says 36-year-old Tanya Boyett was pronounced dead a little before 1030 last night. No word on what caused the fire. A Pike County man is behind bars after police say he strangled a child. The incident happened last Saturday when police were called out to a home on Ziegler Drive in Pikeville. Police say 41-year-old Michael Harris strangled a 10-year-old and fired a gun at a car while the mother of the child was trying to get away. When police arrived, they found drugs in Harris's pockets. Harris was taken to the Pike County Detention Center. A Wayne County man is facing charges after police say they found multiple drugs on him. It happened yesterday evening when police were looking for a truck believed to be transporting illegal narcotics. After a traffic stop, police searched the truck, and during that search, three bags of a crystal substance believed to be meth were found along with several other drugs. Dustin Dodd of Monticello was taken to the Wayne County Detention Center. Two people in charge of a number of addiction treatment centers in Kentucky were arrested in Bath County this past weekend. The incident happened when police received a complaint of a car driving at a high rate of speed on Interstate 64. After following them to a gas station, officers noted both Jason and Meyer Elam were unsteady on their feet and slurring their words after getting out of their cars. John was charged with DUI while Myra was charged with public intoxication. State police are asking for help finding a Knott County man who went missing. Troopers describe 56-year-old Richie Sloan of Lit Car as a white man who is about 5 feet 8 inches tall and weighs about 150 pounds. Troopers say Sloan has blue eyes with 
partially gray hair, as you can see there in the picture. Officials say Sloan was last seen about two months ago walking along Kentucky 160 near his home on Craig Court. If you have any information, you're asked to call KSP at 606-435-6069. Well, check out this beautiful sunset from our camera at Buffalo Mountain over in Perry County as high pressure will once again bring some dry and mainly clear weather as we go into this evening. That current temperature sitting at 46 over in Perry County, 45 in Pikeville, 46 also in Clintwood, still up to 50 for Harlan, 51 over in Manchester. So we are tracking some more chilly conditions as we go into this evening, all thanks to a clear sky. And that is all thanks to high pressure that will continue to sit over the region by Wednesday, also on Thursday. So we stay dry once again on Wednesday under some more sunshine. Those temperatures are warmer tomorrow. We top out in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Most of your Thursday is dry, but we are watching out for a little bit of a pattern change by late Thursday. Also for Friday and the weekend as more rain chances are on the way. Now once we get through next week, we are watching out for some much cooler conditions. Those details coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. All right. Thank you, Cameron. House Bill 387 is one of the many bills that's been filed in the Kentucky Legislature, and this morning it passed out of committee and is heading to the full House. WYMT's Olivia Calfee has more about the impact this bill could have on the education system in the Commonwealth. As a teacher, nobody likes missing school, and they especially don't like missing school when they know there's no substitute teacher. House Representative Timmy Truitt says he knows House Bill 387 is urgent because he not only spends his days in Frankfurt, but also walking the halls of the elementary school he principals, saying House Bill 387 has the power to make a difference in schools across the Commonwealth. Right now, we don't have people to cover the classes, so I'm having to pull people either on, on their plannings to cover a class, which is extra work, I'm having to put my classified aides in that position, which they're not getting paid for. So it only makes sense to open up uh, and make it a little bit easier to become that substitute teacher because there is such a need at this point in time. Saying rather than needing a certain number of hours, people can get certified through the Education Professional Standards Board, even opening the door for younger people to get experience while also filling the void of sub teachers. So this is just going to be a bill that I really see helping everyone in the education system. And these individuals who are out here, you know, maybe going to college who would like to work on Fridays when they have no class. Hey, go and substitute teach somewhere in a building and, you know, make you a hundred bucks a day. True, it says the bill passed the education committee on Tuesday morning, 20 to zero, and now heads to the house. In Perry County, Olivia Calfi, WYMT Mountain News. Some of the other co-sponsors of that bill include Josh Bray, Chris Fugit, Jacob Justice, Derek Lewis, and Tom Smith. A bill to ban the use of cell phones in Kentucky classrooms is moving forward. House Bill 383 would require schools to ban phones in the classroom. It passed unanimously in the House Education Committee this morning. Representative Josh Bray says he got the idea from a teacher having trouble keeping students off their phones. There would be a few exceptions to the ban, including emergencies. It gives the, the teacher the support in the classroom because now the administration kind of has to have their back. Um, and it gives the administration support because, you know, they've kind of got to go down this path now. That bill now heads to the full house for a vote. A group of health care workers gathered in support of a bill they believe would help staffing for physicians assistance. If passed, House Bill 361 would help physicians get licensed faster. Meredith Cottrell studies at Sullivan University with hopes of staying in the Commonwealth. She says this bill will help. I would like to stay uh, in Louisville, um, where Sullivan is based in. I um, really love the area and the community that's there, as well as the healthcare care systems that are present. That's a lot of the advocacy today, is to be able to um, improve our chances of staying in Louisville, um, just from an appeal perspective in terms of jobs. Bill sponsor Mike Klein says he hopes the passing of the bill gives physicians assistants a seat at the table in the future. Some Kentucky Utilities customers are in sticker shock. Last month's cold snap with freezing temperatures caused higher electric bills. 
Carla Lemieux has her latest KU bill. She owes the electric company more than 300 bucks, and she's not the only one. Lemieux says her neighbors have been hit hard as well, and she wants some answers. I called KU, and they tried to blame it on everything from Christmas lights, which we couldn't put up due to hail damage last year, um, to space heaters, which we don't own, to a water heater, which we replaced three months ago. Kentucky Utilities told our sister station that on January 17th, the electric company peaked at 4,000 megawatts, the highest KU peak load in the last five years. With a new city clerk and a new city attorney, Elkhorn City's council is hoping to band together and find solutions to the city's money concerns. WYMT's Buddy Forbes was there as the council held a meeting last night bringing the community in to hear the problems and the plans. Lord help us, we got, uh, there's, a, there's a mess. A contentious city council meeting. We have to have a head man. We're walking around with no head. Focused on Elkhorn City's fumbling finances. I know there was a lot of, a lot of fingers pointed at uh, the clerk that got fired. You know, and excuse me guys, but the clerk ain't your problem. Mm -hmm. The Elkhorn City Council held a special called meeting Monday night, taking responsibility for the oversights that left the city in the hole more than $300,000. That's on us that we didn't know what we should have known and those kind of things that slipped by us that, you know, but now we're, we're trying to get it back on track. We, we've made some steps. The council discussed more than $100,000 in missing pension payments, years of missing audits freezing the city's grant projects, and a series of banking inconsistencies causing payroll checks to bounce. Money that has been misplaced throughout the city, but it's been paid on other things. It's not been uh, uh, unaccounted for, but it's been put places that we didn't realize what was going on. Officials say there is just not enough money flowing in but they had no indication there was a problem. Hi. I never got a letter from the state. You did? No, I did not. Didn't get enough cash or anything? Now, with a plan in place to address delinquent water bills and seek outside funding and a request for new property value assessments, council members say it will take time to get revenue rolling in. The water bills that's owed is bad, but homes that are worth $80,000 are valued at $2,000. But community members say it should have never gotten to this point. No, no, you don't ask for it. You demand it. These people, they, they work real hard. They, they deserve the best. And like I said, that's why I said I, I feel bad because maybe I wasn't giving my best. And I realized that, you know, maybe I should be more involved in what's going on. The, the things that I thought someone else was taking care of, I realized that maybe I need to have more information there. And, and we all should. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The state is currently completing an audit on the city, which officials say will help the council find footing and create a working budget. The Pike County Fiscal Court is taking over one of the ongoing grant projects to make sure work continues and employees are being paid. Nearly $2 million in federal funding has been approved for the Kentucky National Guard for measures taken after the July 2022 flood here in the mountains. The $1.9 million in funding was, was approved by FEMA. Well, we are tracking some more dry weather for now, but rain chances are looming later this week. Those details coming up after this break. Plus... The bourbon business is booming. We'll take a look at how Kentucky's signature spirit is helping fuel the state's economy. 